Tim Scott running for the president of the United States is more important to black America than Barack Obama's run for the presidency. What's good, y'all? So you probably heard what I just said, the cold intro. You probably thinking like, man, this dude is on something. How you gonna compare Tim Scott to Barack Obama? But I'm going to explain it to y'all. I'm gonna give y'all great reasons why I feel that way. I mean, I, by the end of the video, I'm pretty sure that you guys will agree with me. You know what I'm saying? Unless you're one of those Barack Obama um, homies, like, you know what I mean? You got Barack Obama's picture all over your house and you wear Barack Obama t-shirts, you still wear the Hope t-shirt with the color, you know what I mean? You got Barack Obama's picture with Michelle Obama picture next to Jesus and you got Barack Obama's picture next to your dead family members and if you idolize Barack Obama, this video is not for you. So if you, somebody like myself that look at things in an unbiased view, this video is for you. So if you like this kind of content, man, make sure you hit subscribe and turn notifications on because this is the kind of content that I am going to bring. I'm not trying to say I'm left wing, right wing or whatever. You know what I mean? If I see something and I feel a certain way about it, I won't speak on it. So Tim Scott was on The View, right? You know, The View is uh, basically a, a, a liberal show with uh, like they were four to five women on there. And they were saying things about uh, Tim Scott saying that he's the exception, not the rule when it comes to black success. And he actually came onto the show and to speak about that. I love the message that Tim Scott is saying. He's saying that black people can be successful in America and you can just be successful if you put in the work. You know what I mean? Put in the work, make connections, you could become successful. Yeah, it's gonna be hardships. Yeah, it's not gonna be as easy. Sometimes you might run into things. Sometimes you might run into people gatekeeping, but you can't let those things stop you from being coming successful. And that's why I love the message of Tim Scott. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna play a clip of Tim Scott on The View. And throughout the clip, I might have to, you know, have some interruptions and stuff like that. So I'll give you my thoughts and opinions on it. But if you want to see the full clip, I'll put the link to the to the Twitter post that I found so you can watch guys watching this entirety. But Tim Scott on The View has an important message that needs to be amplified and projected all across the airwaves. So without further ado, man, let's get into this video of Tim Scott. And after that, I'll give you my thoughts. So be sure to stay tuned and don't miss out and don't try to like fast forward and watch it. Uh, watch the whole video. You know how the algorithm works. Watch the whole video. I appreciate y'all. So let's get into this. You have indicated that you don't believe in systemic racism. What is your definition of systemic racism? Let me ask, answer the uh, question that you've answered. Does it or does it even exist yeah. in your mind? Let me, let me uh, answer the question this way. One of the things that I think about and one of the reasons why I'm on the show is because of the comments that were made, frankly, on this show, that the only way for a young African-American kid to be successful in this country is to be the exception and not the rule. That is a dangerous, offensive disgusting message to send to our young people today that the only way to succeed is by being the exception. I will tell you that if my life is the exception, uh, I can't imagine. But, but, I can't but it is. But it's not. See, that, that part I don't like. First, let's address what he said, like, because, all right, first, let's address one thing. Let's be clear. Um, Sonny Holson asked him a question. Your man definitely did not answer the question, but well, his response was definitely needed. It was definitely needed because of what joy behar said previously and this is what she said who, you know he's like clarence thomas black republican who believes in pulling yourself by your bootstraps rather than to me understanding the systemic racism that african americans face in this country and other minorities he doesn't get it neither does uh clarence right and that's why they're republicans yeah <laughs> <laughs> so he came back to the show to address it and if you may or may not notice, the person who made that comment is not even on the set. So she wasn't even woman enough to come on the set to face this man because whatever reason, right? I don't know why. Maybe it's her day off. Maybe she's sick. Maybe she's on vacation. Maybe some type of holiday that she had to take off. Whatever. I don't know the reason, but she is not there to address this man, right? But, you know, he said, my life is the exception. He said, no, he said, if my life is the exception, not the rule, I don't want to put that message out there. And Sonny Hosa said, but your life is the exception. I'd rather hear the message of, hey, you can do this too. Not the exception that, hey, you can't do this. And Sonny Hosa got some nerve because she's a lawyer. She's an author. She's a co-host of a successful TV show. She's the exception as well. She can't go out and, and promote her lifestyle of how she got to where she is instead of telling people that, hey, you gotta be a victim. I'd rather hear 
what Tim Scott is saying than what Sonny Holston is saying or Joy Behar or anybody else on the panel that feels that way about black people. We don't need that message of being victims. That's what's holding us back in my opinion. Keep saying that we victims. We're not victims. We could be victors, but they want to keep pushing this message out there. And for her to have success in this country and, and still have that type of mindset, it is dangerous. It is dangerous. But let's continue. Not actually. Here's here's it's been here's 114 like, years. Yeah. So so the fact of the matter is we've had an African American president, African American uh, vice president. We've had two African Americans to be secretaries of the state uh, in my home city. Uh, the police chief is an African American who's now running for mayor. The head of the highway patrol for South Carolina is an African American. Still in exceptions. 19, in 19 so she keeps saying still exceptions. Somebody becoming the mayor of the city, that's the exception? I mean, I'm not saying a mayor is a, a small feat, but that's something that somebody could strive to be. I get it, maybe the presidency. Yeah, maybe that's something that, you know, is the exception. But the mayor? The mayor? You could become the mayor. You could, be, you could have a feat to become the mayor. You know what I mean? It's not the exception. You could become in politics. You don't have to become the mayor. You could become chief of police. You could become all these things. And y'all wanted to keep putting out there that these are the exceptions. That is dangerous. In 75, um, there was about 15% unemployment in the African-American community for the first time in the history of the country. It's under 5%. 40% homelessness. And 50% of African Folk, 50 Americans of the folks get, in our community get 13% make, of the population. You have a chance to ask the question. I know that I've watched you. And now you see that he's trying to answer questions he tried to get his point across and Sonny Holster keep trying to talk over him like you don't have respect for this man I get it you don't like him because he's a Republican I get it you don't like him because he don't say your talking points but let that man speak let the man speak you know what I'm saying you 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 have a, a guest coming on to your show he's asking questions but you want to talk over him you want to be emotional and talk over this man you want to show that you like people to be deferential and respectful, so I'm going to do the that same thing. True. So here's what I'm going to suggest. I'm going to suggest that the fact of the matter is that progress in America is palpable. It can be measured in generations. I look back at the fact that my grandfather, born in 1921 in Sally, South Carolina, when he was on a, on a sidewalk, a white person was coming, he had to step off and not make eye contact. That man believed then, with some doubt now, in the goodness of America, because he believed in having faith in God, Mm -hmm. faith in himself and faith in what the future could hold for his kids would unleash opportunities in ways that you you cannot imagine every kid today can look just change the stations and see how much progress has been made in this country abc nbc cbs espn cnn fox news all have african-american and hispanic hosts so what i'm suggesting is that the yesterday's exception is today's rule and for us to so suggest America has met its promise no I he's right what's going on in 1920 is not the same thing as going on in 2023 but for whatever reason they love to keep saying things like the you know nothing changed a new jim crow's coming back all these fair mockery things they want to put out to the black community and nine times out of ten that's not the case if you really look into these things that they post and you start looking in deep deep details about it is never the case but they love putting fear fear mongering out there they love putting that out there and I, I i appreciate this message that tim scott is putting out there like hey you could become something why why is this a, a knock why are they knocking this man for telling black people that you could become something this is this is insane. Or the the concept of America is that we are going to become a more perfect union. That in fact, the challenges that we face 50 years ago and 60 years ago should not be the same challenges that we face today. And here's the way that you you measure that. When my mother was born, about 10% of African Americans got a high school degree wow. diploma. Today it's over 90%. When you look at the income, when you look at the income success that That's we've an had, HBCU stat. Well, <laughs> see, that's, that's why I was laughing because I knew what I was coming up. I mean, I, I appreciate the message, but you can't you can't cover wrong stats, my man. You can't cover wrong stats, and that's the HBCU stat. I'm like, 90% of black people getting diplomas in high school? That's an HBCU stat. So I saw um, people talking about that on Twitter. So yeah, he was wrong about that. But 
Let's continue on. So HBCUs have is a good okay. one because one of the reasons why I took the funding for HBCUs to the highest level in the history of the country and then I helped make it permanent is because I believe that education is the closest thing to magic in America. So I'm about making sure that our kids have as many opportunities to succeed as possible. It's one of the reasons why I need I did- an opportunity. To well, succeed, let me, let me, because I have to go to bre- oh, they're we begging. Have more time, though. They're big. They <laughs> we have more time. I'm, I'm just getting started. I, I believe all people can see the success that I've had. I believe all people can see the success that I have. I believe education is the closest thing to magic in America. This message right here is more important to Black Americans right now than Barack Obama. Than Barack Obama campaign running on hope. You know what I'm saying? His campaign was literally ran on hope. Hope for this country. This man is telling you, you could become where I'm at. You could become where I'm You don't. And it's the crazy part about it, if you really think about it, and you start looking at different nationalities, different races, different cultures, these people come here with less than what we started with and become further than where we at in most cases. I mean, I'll give you an example. When I lived in New York, Somebody who I did business with, his wife was the breadwinner in New York, was the breadwinner. She was making the money. This woman cultivated a business in New York without learning how to speak proper English. She spoke a little bit of English just to get by. She spoke Spanish and she was able to cultivate a business, a multi million dollar business in New York. What black person is going to another country fully not learning the language and could do that? Think about that. Think about how is people out here leaps and bounds of what we do, what we, we, we given, we're given this opportunity. We are born here. Why can't we have the same attitude as Tim Scott? Why can't we have that attitude? Hey, I could work hard. I can make you something of myself. I'm not the exception. I am the rule. The rule should be that it should be that that should be the message. That's why what he's saying is more important to Barack Obama and Sonny hosted up there, you know, just being so condescending about the things that he's saying yeah i ain't gonna front he messed up on that um that at that hbcu stat you know what i'm saying she did catch him out there with that she was on guard with that one shout out to sunny hosted for that but what this man is saying should be amplified what this man is saying should be projected it should be out there it should be a message out there for black america i don't think tim scott is going to get the republican nomination to run for presidency Some people saying Tim Scott is running for vice president. Like he's going to make a good enough run, make enough noise. And whoever's running for president is going to choose Tim Scott to be the vice president. Maybe so. But his message should resonate with black America because everybody else is doing great in this country. And not to say some black Americans are not doing great, but you can see that our our footprint in this country, our hold on this country, our influence on this country, as far as politically, as far as economically, as far as academically, is falling by the wayside day by day. And, and what he's saying should be amplified, man. It definitely should be amplified. Like I said, I'm not sure how far he's gonna go. Like people say he's running for vice president, but at the same time, man, what this man is saying, I'm all for it, yo. I'm all for it of you could do what you want. I tell my son that all the time. I tell my son like that all the time. Like you put in the education, you put in the work of getting things done. You could become what you want. It, it's too much opportunity out here in this country. Too much opportunity. People are literally dying to get to this country, literally dying to get to this country for the opportunity because the opportunity that we have here is not there. And like I said, Tim Scott, man, my hat's off to you, man. I, I appreciate the message. I, I would, you know what I'm saying? You keep pushing out this message. I'll keep supporting what you're doing. Keep supporting what you're doing, man. You know what I mean? But let me know how you feel about Tim Scott's message. And let me let me know how you feel about the views point of view of what Tim Scott is saying. Saying that that's the exception, not the rule. I'd rather be the rule. I want to come with a mindset that this is the rule. I'm American. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, Mer- I'm a citizen of this country. I know I can make it. I know I can make it. And I'm going to do what I got to do to become great. I'm not going to just have some excuse like, oh, man, it ain't easy for me. You know how it is. No, I'm not coming with that that excuse. I'm coming with some real talk, man. Like, this is this is how it's supposed to be. And I would rather that message, man. Like, you got 
Beyonce out here doing songs with Kendrick Lamar talking about how bad America is, but one is a billionaire, the other one's a multimillionaire. I'd rather hear the I'd rather hear the message of what you could do, not what's being done to me. Cause everything is being done to everybody. Suck it up. You know what I mean? Maybe some gatekeeping. Find another way out through the gate. Find your way over the gate, under the gate, cut a hole in the gate, whatever. Get through. Everybody can get through because everybody else is doing it except for us. We want to be victims, not victims. I'm a victim. Appreciate y'all, man. All right, man. Till next time. Peace. Real Rap Ron is signing off. And if you like this content, please hit subscribe. Also, check out this other video. All right, man. Peace.